We were migrants. We were we were homeless beer drinkers for the longest time. The Red Square came from the Taku. It was the early 90s. We would gather at the one end of the bar. I, I coined this phrase on a Friday night and uh, you know something about Red Square and having the opportunity of chiseling out some of the tiles and, and it didn't work out because the, 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 the owners didn't really like it very much. He purposefully uh, uh, rearranged the bar so that this area couldn't be used again. Now that's a red. So we were, we were floundered around like in the promised land for a while. We would go to various other places. And then when this bar became, had a bar instead of just a tent, we started migrating over here. Robert, the guy who used to be the manager here, he put this, down, this thing down one time and it was just a mess. So uh, I came in and fixed it up and then it started to wear off and that's when I came back with my father-in-law, Tommy. A good friend of mine, Dave Mills, came in when he saw this red. He says, that's not red. He says, you've uh, desecrated all the good communists because that's not red enough. Well, bless Dave's heart. I've looked for something like, you know, communist red or some sort of red. But uh, you can get cherry red. You can get fire engine red, cardinal red. But to get something that's, uh, you know, like Che Guevara red, Homeland Security be all over you. For, for doing this and even talking about it, of course, the, the border guards, they view everything on YouTube. Next time I get on a plane, I'll be detained and I'll get the rubber glove treatment just like Conrad Black. We even had Paul Martin here one afternoon, Prime Minister at the time. And we tried to get him to come over and to stand at Red Square and have a picture taken, but his handlers absolutely just said no. We certainly would have made hay with it, you know, because this is mostly an NDP left-wing um, leaning type of square as opposed to the red book that Jean Chrétien and uh, there's the blue book and the red book. Both of them turned out to be worthless and this, of course, is priceless. Our little red square is priceless. Okay, so we're putting another coat on here. Oh, just look at it. We're dripping all over the place. Lord Jesus, look at it. And look at how that fills it in, huh? But, you know, that's another thing about the Michelangelo and the Sistine Chapel. You know, he spent five years painting it with a little half-inch brush, and he could have done it in the weekend with a roller. Ah, yes, the things I do for all my brothers and sisters that are come here to enjoy their beer on Friday nights. We just gotta let the paint dry and and it's all good. I know he's a charming guy, you know, he's a, you know, but so yeah, you know, yeah, you may be able to get it. Now what the hell kind of conversation is going on down there?
Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy.